Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica with Memory Box Candle Co. And I make videos all about the journey of starting a candle business. And in today's video, I wanted to walk you through the process of me prepping my jars, both the glass jar as well as the tins for my candle business. I know I've showed it before in previous videos, but there was a little bit more explaining that I wanted to do, especially for any beginners out there or anybody who is just getting into candle making. I wanted to kind of walk you through the process of why I do everything the way that I do it. Now, the first thing that I wanted to show you was both of my vessels. Now, I use the 13.5 ounce matte black tumbler style jars that I get from California Candle Supply. And these are eight ounce matte black tins, again, from California Candle Supply. These actually come wrapped up in a plastic. However, the plastic kind of goes over, so the plastic's covering the top. So I remove this plastic when I am prepping and pouring candles in the tins. However, I leave this thin plastic over the tumbler style glass jars. And the reason being is that matte black is not very forgiving when it comes to fingerprints, if it's a certain kind of matte black coating. For some reason, this coating right here is not at all hard to remove fingerprints, or even if I spill, it's not hard to clean up. However, this jar right here, I would not recommend if you were a beginner to work with this kind of jar. Um, it is not very forgiving when it comes to spills, fingerprints, anything like that. So I leave this on as long as possible until I get to the process of actually labeling my candles. And then another thing that you have to keep in mind when it comes to choosing a vessel, whether that's glass, tin, or ceramic, or whatever you are working with, you have to make sure that that vessel is suitable for candle making. When I first got into candle making back in September of 2019, I actually was browsing around my local craft store called Michael's and I found a jar that I liked, but I wasn't sure if it was suitable for candle making. And I didn't want to just come home and just assume, you never wanna assume that it's suitable for candle making. Sometimes if you turn it over and depending on which brand it is, it may say that it's suitable for heat or whatever it is, or it may say something like, do not put in dishwasher or do not add hot liquids. And that is absolutely should give you the indication that it is not suitable for candle making, considering that um, if it's saying that, that means that the glass is either too thin or it is just not made to handle any heat inside. So what I ended up doing was I ended up emailing the company at the bottom of the um, jar. So the bottom of the jar had a sticker on it. It told me which company it was, which was Libby. So I think if you've been in candle making for a while, you probably know the Libby style jars. Uh, but at the time I didn't know. So I actually sent them an email and I'll pop it up right on screen right here. This was back in September. So it was September 28th of 2019 and I just, basically contacted them just to make sure. And funny enough, I never even ended up making any candles out of that jar because I ended up finding these ones. And the reasons why I knew that these were good for candle making was because I got them from an actual candle supplier. So that's definitely a surefire way to make sure that the jars that you are picking out to make candles out of, if you get it from a candle supplier, then that is almost guaranteed that they will be suitable for candle making. So the first thing that I do is I always wear gloves during this process because I don't want the rubbing alcohol to dry out my hands. Um, just a personal preference. I made this little alcohol bottle right here. So these are actually my room spray bottles, but it was so much easier to spray it than it was what I used to do. So this is the alcohol bottle that I, or the kind of alcohol that I use for this. It's just the regular 70% isopropyl alcohol. And what I used to do is I would take cotton swabs, go like that, and then go to the bottom, go to the bottom. And it just was a lot uh, less efficient. And my whole process when it comes to prepping jars is efficiency. So you'll see in a moment I have different tools and I typically do this in a very um, bulk way. So I would open up an entire box of just this size, so 24 of these, and clean, 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 clean all 24, 
and then make sure that they're all dry and then go through the process. So I typically don't do it one at a time like this, but of course, just for this video, I'm showing you that. So what I do first is I'm just going to add a couple sprays to the bottom of the jar. I use these towels right here. These are blue shop towels. And I'm just going to go through, clean off the bottom of the jars. The reason why I clean off the bottom of the jars with rubbing alcohol is because during the manufacturing process, during the shipping process and the storing process, there's going to be cardboard remnants, there's going to be little dust particles, and those dust particles add basically a barrier in between the glass and whatever you are using to adhere the wick down. And we know within candle making, we don't want the wick to move or come out. And um, kind of the way that I've been able to do that is making sure that there is a clean surface for the wick to stick down on. And I know a lot of people are like, but alcohol is flammable, why would you put that in there? it evaporates, you're drying it up. There is no way that by the time you add wax and all that in here that there is any alcohol left in here that it's going to catch fire. But make sure you are drying it off to the point where there is no liquid at all from the rubbing alcohol and that it's completely dry. So after everything is dry, it is ready to adhere the wicks down at the bottom of the jar. I choose to use wick stickers. I know a lot of people choose to use certain kinds of glue, um, high heat, uh, hot glue, RTV glue. There's so many different things that you can use. I do personally like using wick stickers. I've found that these work really well and they allow the customer to be able to reuse the jar right afterwards. So what I actually do or what my husband does for me is he goes through, I give him the packet of wicks and he goes through and he pre adds that to the bottom of the wick. It saves an extra few seconds during the prepping process. And you may think, okay, it's just a few seconds, but it really helps with the efficiency of it. So these are actually already on these wicks right here. And these are CDN size two wicks. And um, just as a little disclaimer, um, this is just what I use. I do a custom wax blend that works well to double wick both of these vessels. So just make sure that you are doing your own testing to find these supplies that works best for you and your jars and your wax. But I am actually going to add these wicks onto this little device right here. I will have it linked in the description box below on where I get this from. But essentially what this does is this is custom made to fit directly inside of these jars that I use. So it is basically centering both of those with about an inch apart between the two wicks. And as soon as I take off this paper right here, so I'm gonna take off these little bits of paper so that the sticky, sticky side is showing. And then I put that right down at the bottom. I push down on each of the little wicks. I pull it off and then those are quote unquote perfectly centered. Um, and again, this is just efficiency for me and it makes it so much faster during the process. But again, I used to just do this manually, take a little pen and be able to push those down. There are also these cool little devices too. So these you would put the wicks down and you'd again be able to do that. But these are so much better than using like a pen or something, which is what a lot of people use. And you know, opening up the pen, fishing it through and pushing it down. So this is kind of an alternative to something like this. Um, and again, if you're just starting out, I would definitely recommend something like this. You don't have to jump to a device like this, especially if you're trying to um, try out different jars. And then at this point, I'm going to center my wicks and hold them together. If you just leave the wicks like this, when you pour the wax in, they're just going to uh, get hot and then they get a lot more pliable and then they're just gonna fall over. And then you're gonna have wicks all to the side. So the reason why we add in wick holders when, candle, when we make candles is just so the wicks are staying as straight and even and um, upright as possible so that they have the most even burn throughout the candle. And these again are from that Etsy shop that I use. These are custom wicks made specifically for this jar. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put those through the little holes. I put it on and I personally like to twist. 
And one way that you can really tell that your wicks are stuck to the bottom is if you give it a tug and it's not coming off. So I'm giving these a pretty good tug and they are not coming off. So I hold those taut and then I basically twist it. And that's just something that I found that I like to do. There are little holes on the side right here, but I just found that this holds it a lot more taut. And again, the tautness of it is what I'm looking for because I wanna make sure that there's no curves or bends or anything in the wicks when I pour in the wax. So that is it for prepping this jar. So I'm going to set that off to the side. And for this jar, I'm actually going to show you how I manually wick it. So I'm going to take the same wicks that I just used for that larger jar. And we're gonna do this one at a time. So I'm going to put this through and hold it up on top right here. So there's going to be enough at the top right there to hold on to it. Pull that off. And then when I'm looking at it, essentially what I'm doing is I'm trying to see what the middle is, and then I go over about a centimeter. So I'm going to put it down about right there because we don't want the wicks to be too far apart. That is one thing that I learned with candle making is that we don't want the wicks to be super far apart and closer to the edges of the jar because it's gonna start to burn hotter. We also don't want them too close together so that they burn too hot. So what I have found with a lot of jars is that about an inch apart or about enough space to where it's even from the edge of the jar to the wick, to the next wick, to the edge of the jar. That's pretty much what I had learned during this process of candle making. And again, it's going to vary based on the jars that you're using. But with this, I'm going to stick it down probably right about there. So this is what it looks like when I manually wick it. And again, this is just a lot of practice with it. And you will find that you may not do it perfectly the first time, um, especially if you're just getting started with it. But the more you do it and the more practice you get at it, the more that you are going to get so much better at it. And then I'm going to take one of these little wick holders. Again, it's from the same Etsy shop as where I get all the tools that I use. And um, I'm going to put this right on here. And again, this is made specifically for these tens. So I'm going to align it right there. And if you're wondering why this one is a half and that one is a full, there really is no rhyme or reason to it. Um, it's just different designs. And again, I pulled on that, kept it taut and twisted it. And now this one is ready to go. A little trick that I like to do when I'm wicking these by hand is actually not necessarily looking at the big circles at the base of the metal wicks, but looking at the space in between. So this space in between the two circles is about a quarter of an inch. So I know that if I get this one about in the right spot that I want it to stick down on, I'm not really focusing on the big circle. I'm more about looking at that gap right there and leaving about a quarter of an inch. And then I know that it will be about centered to my liking. And then one last thing I wanted to mention before I end today's video is different kinds of wick holders that I've used before in the past. I got these, I think these are four inch cotter pens from California Candle Supply. I used to use these all the time to hold my two wicks in place before I got these, these devices. I also, as an alternative to that one, have used these chip clips before. So these just snap and I actually really liked using these kind of more than the cotter pins in a way, just because these over time will stretch out and they don't hold as tight as these ones do. And because these ones can snap together, these ones work really well. And then my favorite device to use, so cheap and so easy are these clothes pins. So if you have a vessel that is um, small enough in diameter that you can use this and you're only using one wick, highly recommend to use one of these clothes pens. I'm actually going through a testing process right now, um, just testing out using one wick on my tens right here. And the best thing about these is that you kind of have a built in little holder. So I thought in the very beginning to just leave it up like that, but actually you can hold it taut and open up the side and clamp it. And then it actually ends up working in a way to where it's holding it even more taut. So that way the wick, you know, doesn't get all wonky before pouring in the wax. But that is all that I wanted to show you in today's video. I really hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something, especially if you are a beginner. 
And with that, I'm going to end today's video right here. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Erica Marie Morris, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.